boot battle as old as time. Red Wing Mach Toe versus Thoroughgood Mach Toe. Definitely one of the more requested comparisons that we get on a nearly daily basis in DMs and comments. And so I think I'm, the way I'm gonna do this is kind of the 10, 11 things to consider before buying one of these because they're very similar looking boots, but they're very different in how they wear, how they break in. And there's definitely some things you need to consider before investing in one of these because they're not cheap boots. You know, I think uh, what I should have done is look at the price because that's probably the number one thing. So uh, <laughs> let me pull that up. 310 for the Red Wings and about 250 for the Thoroughgoods. So they're expensive boots and you wanna know what you're getting and know what you're in for when you actually invest in one of these, whether it's for work or for casual or whatever happen, whatever you happen to buy them for. So number one, the break-in, because these break in very differently. The Red Wings, because of all the components we're gonna talk about are really tough to break in. The footbed is, takes forever to compress the shape of your foot. The leather is fairly stiff, even though it is a very supple oiled up leather. It takes a while to break in and shape the shape of your foot, especially the tongue, because I've got a pair of the taller eight inch version that we're working on for a Rose Anvil Builds video. And you almost can't tie them because those tongues, the tongue is so stiff. And it's, I, I like it because I'd, I'd rather have the same leather in the tongue rather than a cheaper, thinner leather. I'd rather go through the break in period, but it's definitely something you have to keep in mind compared to the Thoroughgood. It's almost no break in period. Every brand and every boot's like, oh, there's no break in period with these. Thoroughgood is about as close as you can get to that because of some of the components we're talking about, but mostly this upper leather is really soft and like the insole comes with an insert. It's got different materials throughout the sole construction that make it a lot more affordable, but also more comfortable. And so breaking these two in, the Red Wing is a little bit of a trial of, of will to get it broken in if you've never broken in a pair of boots versus the Thoroughgood. They're more just like breaking in a pair of regular like foam based boots, you know, even though they're traditionally built, they feel a lot more like a, a modern boot when you when you go to break them in. And that matters to some people because some people just don't want to go through a month of pain of wearing these to get them to a point where they're comfortable versus comfortable right off the bat. The next thing that falls right in line with that is the upper leather. Like I said, the Red Wing is a little bit more stiff. It still has a lot of oils and compounds pushed into it or worked into it. It's tanned by the Red Wing tannery. So it's this vertically integrated style of doing things. And I love this leather. I love the Oro Legacy leather. It has a really bright pop to it. That's why you see that bluing on the inside. They purposely leave that bluing of the chrome tanning process in there. So the undertones of the leather show a lot brighter. That's why when you bend it, it gets a lot lighter along with the normal properties of pull up. It's a beautiful leather. It's one of my favorite leathers, but it's, it's stiff. It's tough to break in, but it's going to be extremely durable. It's going to last a long time, especially if you take care of it compared to the Thoroughgood leather. This is also one of my favorite leathers because it's it's a similar looking leather. It's a similar color, has a lot of pull up. This is tanned by Seidel. And I had no idea that Seidel tanned this leather until I sat down with him for that hour long interview that we'll probably repost on this channel um, because it's just kind of buried on the main channel. And the thing that makes this different from the Red Wing leather is this is tumbled and it's really soft. It's really supple. It has even more oils and compounds worked into it. It's almost like uh, sticky to the touch, not sticky, but you can feel it. It's, it has, it's almost like someone put lotion on this, you know, like after you put lotion on it, that, that feeling, that's kind of how this feels. So it's super easy to break in, super comfortable. It might not be quite as durable as the red wing leather, just because it's already pre broken in. So in theory, you get a little more longevity out of a harder leather as it breaks in. It's gonna hold its shape more. It's not gonna bend as severely or as quickly or crease, I guess. But out of the two of them, the Thoroughgood leather is a lot more comfortable, but I like the look of the Oro Legacy leather of the Red Wings more. When it comes to which one's better, they're they're both really good leathers. You really can't go wrong with either of these leathers. They're, they're both American tanned. I know which tanneries both these leathers come from, but they're both reputable. And if you were buying these for work, the Oro Legacy might give you a little bit more support around your ankle, whereas the Thoroughgood feel a lot more like a high top sneaker around your ankle. Next is one of the biggest differences, and that's the insole that these boots use. The, the Red Wing uses like this five to six ounce, really really hard, really thick leather insole. The benefits of that is it shapes the shape of your foot. You get that custom footprint, almost as if you put your foot in concrete. It gives you that really uh, glove-like feel. It is, it is a unique feeling. If you've never had a boot with a really thick leather insole, you, it's something you should experience at least once in your life because most boots, you slide them in, your feet in, and it just feels like a pair of sneakers because there's so much foam around your foot. 
versus a leather insole, it almost, your foot almost snaps into place. It has that like thunk feeling and like your toes slide right into the little toe spots that you've created. Your arch is supported exactly how it needs to be because everything compresses around it. The cork compresses and I love it, but it is hard. It takes a long time for them to break in. It's still harder underfoot than any foam will be. Even if you're standing all day and it's contoured, it's just hard that you're, it's, you know, it's still a hard surface compared to foam. Compare that to the Thoroughgood where you have a pour on topped fiberboard, which fiberboard is pretty common for boots, $300 and under. It's not as good of a material as leather because it's it's basically just a big sheet of paper that's, or a lot of paper compressed because it's, it's paper like fibers reconstituted into a sheet. Whereas leather is animal hide or animal skin. And it's got those natural fibers that are interlinked already and the top grain, it keeps it really strong. So out of the two of them, the thorough good using fiberboard is less durable, but you get a lot more comfort because you're standing on foam and that, that fiberboard compresses within a matter of days rather than a matter of weeks like leather does. And so you still get that custom footprint because of the cork underneath, uh, but it's not gonna be as durable. Will it be durable enough for a, a few resoles? Yeah, it should last you at least through one resole just fine. Uh, but you're not gonna get that, that foot snapping in feeling that you do from like a leather insole. And out of the two of them, which one's more durable? Probably the leather, which one's more comfortable, the pour on and fiberboard. Which would I choose? If I was working, I would choose the Thoroughgood. If I was just wearing them casually or light work or for, for style, I would choose the leather insole because of the properties of that. Next to the insert or the, the real insole, the, the terminology is still all over the place. It, technically the insole is what the boots lasted on, but also people call it a lasting board, but technically these are insoles, technically that's an insole. I, it's just kind of all over the place, but for the inserted insole, the Red Wings don't have one and you can buy them separately. They have like a little thin leather with a little bit of foam underneath, but the Thoroughgoods come with this really nice comfy insole. It has these more thick, almost jelly at the heel and the ball of your foot and the rest is just a pretty decent quality foam topped with a little like terry cloth or like a felted cloth looking material. The difference is, initial comfort right off the bat, it's squishy on your foot forever, you can replace it. Insoles are just are always gonna be more comfortable than leather. Even, even if the leather's perfectly compressed, you're still gonna be more comfortable with that leather and an insole on top than you will be with just leather, in my opinion. Next to another big difference, the lining between these two. So the, the Red Wing, it has a, a Nubuck leather lining. And this boot's $310, but their Iron Ranger at $350 has a fabric liner. I wish the Iron Rangers had a, a leather lining, but I'm sure there's there's gotta be some reasons why they do that. Maybe maybe with an extra toe cap on the Iron Ranger, it's too bulky and too much around your foot, too too hot maybe. Uh, versus the Thoroughgood, you have this, this canvas liner. Uh, pros and cons of each, leather's gonna absorb your sweat more, it's gonna be more res uh, resistant to wear, your toes aren't gonna wear through it, but it's gonna be hotter like we talked about versus canvas, it's gonna be a lot more breathable, it's gonna be cooler, it's gonna fit around your foot better, It's good, the, shoe, the boot's actually gonna compress and, and expand your foot more because you don't have two layers of leather, but you do wear through these on occasion. And we've seen a couple times where the Thoroughgood has, they, in, during the production, they've overstretched it and it's already starting to split. The nice thing is if you ever really do blow through this, I've, I've reached inside of a pair of Thoroughgoods and, and just ripped the lining out, but ideally you wouldn't have to do that. And so between the two of them, once again, for, for work, I, I actually, I'd still probably lean towards a leather lining for work just because of the durability. Unless I was outside all day and it was really hot, then you might want to go with the canvas lining. Um, but for like mobility and, and like that, that uh, heat, the canvas lining is not bad. It's, you know, it's one of these deals where a lot of boots are going to have one or the other, especially in this price range. But I'd still lean towards the Red Wings, and, but it is, you know, it's 60 bucks more. So keep that in mind. Next to another big difference between these two, which is the welt because the Red Wings use a real leather welt. It does have a little uh, bit of pigment and like paint basically on top. I wish it was just a, a natural welt. Maybe they don't like that really bright color of, of natural veg tan. Maybe it's too distracting. Maybe I wouldn't like it if I saw it, but I would rather just not have that pigmented layer on there. I think it makes it look cheaper. But you compare that to the Thoroughgood and it has a synthetic welt. I believe it's PVC. And uh, I'd rather have this welt look, looks wise compared to a fake one. 
Pros and cons of each, the leather welt's always gonna be preferred nine times out of 10. It's more durable. You've got the internal fiber structure preventing it from slowly creating a, a fissure between uh, or in the plastic to where it's eventually gonna split. Instead, you have all those fibers interlinking together. Um, it's easier to resole. It's more durable for resoles and uh, it looks better. Versus the Thorogood, it's, it's still a Goodyear welt, but it does crack on occasion. I've heard if you're in really cold weather and you're walking around these a ton through several months, that cold makes the, the plastic or the PVC really brittle and eventually at some of these really strong flex points or really common flex points, it'll fracture it and create a fissure until it eventually splits. It doesn't necessarily ruin the functionality of the boot Tons of people have these boots with splits and they're just fine. It's, it's only a really concern when you get to the, to the resoling of this boot. Instead of like the leather welt where if you have to disassemble this to some degree, you can keep that same welt and just put a new stitch line around it versus the PVC, if it has a split in it, you're gonna have to re redo the welt and have a new one sewn on, which is gonna cost you more, it's gonna take more time. And, uh, and so it's you know one of these things where I wish Thoroughgood would just upgrade to a leather welt but they're at a certain price point and it seems to be really working for them. And they, you know, it's, there's some concessions that have to be made. I just wish that it was just a leather welt. Next, if we look at the outsoles, another difference between these two that a lot of people don't really realize because the Red Wings are blown rubber outsole, which basically means they take a rubber compound and infuse it with air to make it lighter, more squishy. And what that does is give you this unique property of these wedge soles where you still get a lot of grip, you get squish, it wears, it still wears pretty quick, but it's not nearly as heavy as a huge slab of solid rubber would be. Compared to the Thorogood, this is their Max Wear outsole. This is made by Merrimack in the United States. The Red Wing is made by, uh, actually I think it's made in-house by Red Wing, but it was based off of the, the Vibram <laughs> Christie. Um, so the difference between the Thorogood is instead of rubber base, this is a polyurethane based. And the benefits of that is allegedly it wears a lot slower while still giving you lots of squish because it's the same concept. It's basically a blown polyurethane, but I've heard from a fair amount of people that the polyurethane doesn't grip quite as much as rubber does, which makes sense. You know, it's, it's a pretty common property difference between the two when it comes to outsoles and other materials. And so between the two for work, I think the max wear one's probably the preferred one for work, just because you're gonna get more wear out of it. And most people aren't gonna deal with much issue with the grip, but for casual wear, you know, it's hard to beat like the old school blown rubber outsoles. They look a little bit different. They wear a little bit differently. And it's just kind of the classic way of doing it. Next, we got a pretty small difference until you start wearing these boots and you're like, oh, this is a bit of a difference. And that's the difference between all eyelets and half speed hooks because speed hooks allow you to quickly unlace your boots and quickly tie them up without having to actually retie or untie your, your boots. You just use those as like a little cheap uh, shortcut to tie your boots versus all eyelets. Every time you put them on and off, you have to untie them, retie them. If you have really thick ankles, you end up unlacing some of the eyelets just to get your foot out. They have different looks, you know, like the Red Wing with all eyelets, it has a lot cleaner look. It's a lot more, traditional, people like all eyelets. I've seen a lot of people taking speed hooks, converting them to eyelets from certain cobblers. Um, we're doing the opposite, I think, on the, the taller version of this for Rose Anvil Builds. I think we're putting in some, some speed hooks because those are eight, eight inches tall. And so you just get stuck in those boots without speed hooks. So for work, speed hooks are preferred, especially if you're in and out of people's houses. You do not want to be untying your boots every time you're in and out of houses. At the end of the day, you know, it, you know, in the morning, nobody wants to put clothes on and boots on in the morning, so easier is better. Throughout the day, it's better. It's just all through and through, it's it's better to have speed hooks except for the look, and I get it. I, I like the look of all eyelets. It, it is a cleaner look, but functionality wins out for me on that one. And then the final one that's not a bonus tip is the difference of having a shank and no shank, because the Red Wing does not have a shank, which isn't a huge deal if, it's, if you're wearing it for casual wear, if you're not, hitting ladders all day or, or shovels or needing to have arch support while you're standing on something. Because the nice thing about a wedge is it, it doesn't give you that gap where the heel usually is to where that boot could collapse. It doesn't really need a shank unless you're using it for work. And that's why the Thorogood has a fiberglass shank because even though you have no uh, gap to support, a lot of people are using these for work. And so you want that support of a shank because imagine you're standing on a ladder rung all day. If, you're, if your foot's collapsed over the top, that's a lot of strain on your arch and your foot and you're, and you're not supported in any way versus having a, a, a shank in there. 
it creates a flat platform for the for your foot to stand on so your foot doesn't bend around the, the rung. It makes a huge difference. And then to the bonus rounds, difference in the counter. This one, this one's a, a difference that you might not notice until you cut your boots in half or until you watch from the videos because the Red Wing is a leather board counter, which means that it's all the extra leather fibers ground up and reconstituted into a leather-like material. It's basically cardboard leather or leather cardboard. And you know, it's to me, it's it's not as good as leather, but it's better better <laughs> better than like synthetics or plastic shanks because you still get some of the properties and the molding to your ankle or to your heel, like leather does, uh, but a little bit less money, and it's not nearly as fragile as a synthetic counter. I still would rather have leather, um, but you compare that to the Celastic counter in the Thorogood. Similar concept as the whole boot. It's gonna break into your heel a lot faster. It's not gonna wear out your heel nearly as much as you're breaking them in, but it is not quite as supportive. It could fracture if you're not careful with taking your boots on and off and you're constantly smashing your boots. And, and there's nothing worse than breaking a counter in the inside of your shoe and having those chunks float, float around. This isn't really that type of counter. I'd be surprised if someone did that with this cellulose counter, uh, but you never know. And that's why you always, I always prefer like full leather counters. And the extra bonus bonus is the toe stitch because the Red Wing is a two piece mock toe where this sidewall comes up. There's a U-shaped toe piece, they butt up together and there's a seam and a stitch around the mock toe, sewing that together. Versus the Thorogood, this is one single piece. The sidewall piece doesn't stop, it continues on and becomes that U-shaped piece. And this stitch around the mock toe just puckers that leather together to give you that mock toe look. And we've been, we've been over some of the benefits and pros and cons of different mock toes construction. So if you haven't seen the everything you need to know about mock toe boots on this channel, I'll put a link below. Uh, but there is some differences between the two. I believe that the single piece mock toe is gonna be more durable because you have less areas for it to fail. I like the look of the two piece more and the benefit of the two pieces, it allows you to give a little more height to your toe box without making the, the leather overstretch or without puckering it too much um, to where it's gonna collapse on itself. There's certain benefits to it, but from like a construction worker, from a from anyone that's actually working in these or doing anything above casual wear, the one piece is probably preferred. But from a classic heritage standpoint, I like the two piece. And uh, I think it has a unique look because it's able to get that sidewall so vertical and the top piece at such a right angle. It just, it just looks differently, different. And then a few things that are really similar about these two is you have cork filling in both of them. You have an internal counter cover that I love. You have, uh, rubber slip sole in the construction that the welt is sewn down to to make these really easy to resole. There's no stitching on the outsole. And they're both made in the United States. Red Wing, they make all their components. It's vertically integrated, so they own all the supply chain for the most part. Versus Thorogood is, uh, I think they make these from imported parts, so you don't know which parts are imported. I don't know if the upper is stitched in the US or if it's stitched overseas or what parts are brought in. But the Red Wing is more American made or more Matusa than the Thorogood, even though the Thorogood you, I still consider Matusa. So now final question, which should you buy and why and what for and who should buy them? Well, if you're buying, if you're looking at the Red Wings, this is more of a casual boot. You could do some light work in it and people do use these as work boots, but they're gonna be a little bit harder on the foot. You don't have that shank. The outsole is gonna wear out a little bit quicker. So this is more of a casual boot, a, like a heritage style, a, a rugged a workwear style boot. And uh, it's a really good way to break into the more upper echelon of, of heritage boots by getting a feel for if you like the leather insole, if you like the stiffness, if you can handle the break-in period. So instead of spending 600 bucks on a Pacific Northwest boot or a custom boot from Sagara or these Indonesian brands, this is a good next step to try that out. Versus the Thorogood, it's, it's gotta be, it's, it's the most popular uh, boot in two different categories, I, I always notice. The first one is construction, guys. Construction dudes love these boots. They're so comfortable, no break-in, they're affordable, that you can just get a new pair every year. Um, and there's a reason why a lot of construction workers wear them. There's all the benefits we talked about. The second group is homeless dudes. So many homeless dudes here in Salt Lake are rocking Thorogoods. So I don't know who's given all the homeless guys Thorogoods, but but they, they clearly last, they're clearly comfortable, and they clearly uh, are willing to put up with that, whatever crazy homeless stuff people are putting them through because you see them all over the place. And, and, and really this boot is a more universal boot. It's gonna be more comfortable. It's gonna be 
it's gonna be able to be used in a lot more instances. You can, you can buy a pair for work, you can buy a pair for casual wear, you can buy a pair for playing, backyard work. There's, it's just a very versatile boot at a fairly affordable price while still being made in the United States. Almost no break-in period, it's a good looking boot. These are two of my most favorite boots because they both hit a different side of wearing in different ways, but they look really similar. And you could really use either for, for both situations, but the Thoroughgood is a little more versatile and you don't necessarily want to work in the, the red wings for your daily driver construction boot. So that's like, that's your whole breakdown. It looks like I went for 25 minutes. I was trying to make this like a 10 minute video, but it went so long. And I wanted to get this video out because it's Mocktober already. Somehow the third Mocktober we've done, we've, we're, th we're thinking about doing a shirt. Let me know if you guys want us to do a shirt. We've just been so busy and, and promoting so many products. I, did, I didn't want to like, hey, buy this, buy this, buy this, collaboration, collaboration. So I'm still on the fence if we're gonna do a Mocktober shirt, but I love Mocktober, it's so fun. And we're not gonna cover these again this year because we've covered them like twice. So I wanted to give you guys a little bit of the, the, the zhush from the Red Wing and the Thorough Good battle. And it's, it's fun to break these down like this. So if you like this, support it. Let me know what you think, what I should add, what's too redundant, what you don't need. Uh, because these Rose Anvil 2 videos are just kind of like throwing stuff at the wall and seeing what sticks and just allowing me to sit down and ramble and have fun recording and, and uh, I love doing it. So thank you guys for all your support. Yeah, I think that's everything. So thank you guys. See ya.